Hello again, my people. Welcome back to the True Crime Corner of Mama Venus. I am back to delivering your weekly dose of South African true crime. In this case, the table best story because I am deep within. If you are new here, welcome, welcome. Hope you are here to stay. If you are listening to this on YouTube, please do go ahead and click on the subscribe button if you haven't. Also, click on the notification bell so you won't miss any of my videos. If you are listening to this on the other podcasting platforms, please do go ahead and follow me and uh, listen to my other episodes. I will be uploading more episodes over the next coming weeks and I am looking to do more podcast exclusive cases in the near future. So guys, this is part three of the Tabo Best of It All, where we look at the Tabo Best story in detail. Part one, we spoke about all his crimes leading up to his arrest and conviction in 2012. And in part two, we talked about his time in prison, how he ran a prominent looking media company and managed to pose as a billionaire whilst behind bars. And we also discussed the details of his escape. I will be releasing a video between today and tomorrow where we look at the timeline of his escape and the investigations leading up to the news breaking out. So I'll just be giving dates on in terms of like this happened this day, this happened that day. It's going to be a relatively short video. OK, I will link all the videos related to this case, the videos that I've done in the description box below please do go ahead and watch it if you haven't especially part one and two before you come to this one in part two we ended where the whole table pesta scandal was exposed by the news publication ground up on the 24th of march this year this is where we find out that the department of correctional services had known about Bester's escape since last year but they really hadn't done much about it and they definitely could have done a lot, eh? Because not only did they have two reports from two independent investigations by reputable um, organizations such as the South African Police Service and the GICS, and those reports, both of them had concluded that Umeste Pesta had most likely escaped lawful custody. They also had seen or had knowledge of the pictures that were taken on the 30th of June 2022, where we see Tabo Pesta and Dr. Nandi Pamakutumana shopping at the Sensin City Woolworths. This was evidence that these two weren't exactly hiding at that point, or they were not acting as fugitives, at least. They were out there living their lives. So it's confusing to me, at least, that no means were done to at least question Dr. Nandipa. Taking into account what has transpired, I genuinely believe that the department officials meant to bury this whole scandal, and this could be because they were embarrassed. This is very embarrassing for the system, and they wanted to protect their image as an institution or a department. But I could be wrong. Anyways, last week, I promised you guys that I will be doing a video on the three women who I believe played a very important role in the Tabo Pesta story. This is his mother, Macy Besta, his business partner whilst in prison, Pumuzo Tenga, and his said customary wife, Nandi Pama Kudumana. You know the saying that behind every successful man stands a woman. This saying holds true for the Tabo Besta story because even though his success is of a criminal nature, which is negative for the society, but I believe that he wouldn't have gotten this far in his criminal career if his mother had not been such a neglectful parent or if Pumuto had not been manipulated into being Tabo Pesta's business partner while he was in prison or if Dr. Nandiba had not decided to be a bonnie to his client. 
in this video, I will discuss uh, Messi and Pumuto only. I will do a separate video for Dr. Nandipa because I discovered during my research and uh, writing the script phase that there is a lot to pack in that story alone. And I wouldn't want to miss any important detail by trying to summarize it and um, fit it into this video. It will be coming through though sometime next week. Now, let's start with Messi Besta. In the Tabo Besta story, we begin to hear about Messi, um, Tabo Besta's mom, when Tabo is on trial for his Facebook rapist crimes in 2012. He mentions during his statement in court that he had been raised by his grandmother as his mother had abandoned him when he was young. There's no evidence as to whether she was ever involved in the trial proceedings at the time or if she ever bothered to visit her son in prison. But by judging from the interview she has done recently, I doubt it. She then surfaces again in May 2022 when she hears on the radio that Tabo Besta had been to death in the Mangaung prison. She went to the government mortuary to claim her son's body so she could lay him to rest respectfully. And this decision seems to be one of many that shifted the whole investigation because when the DNA tests were done between Messi and the dead body, they didn't match meaning that it was either this body wasn't Tabo Besta's body or Mercy wasn't Tabo Besta's biological mother. At the time, it seems as if the police focused more on the former, and that could be because maybe at the time they had concrete evidence that Mercy Besta was the one who had given birth to Tabo. I'm not sure. As I mentioned in the previous video, I don't think Mercy surfacing was accounted for in the whole Tabo Besta scam because... Why would they even think of her, Gaizini? Like, you know, she had been um, an absent parent all along, and it totally makes sense to me, at least, but they just didn't think she would want to even bury her son. The surfacing of Mercy Bester, though, does offer us a glimpse into Tabo Bester's background. Remember in the beginning of the series, I told you guys that there is literally no credible source when it comes to Tabo Bester's background, and this is mostly because he had so many aliases. I was even doubting that Tabo Bester was his real name. According to Mercy, and the records um, do collaborate this, Tabo Besta was born on the 13th of June, 1986, to the 16-year-old Messi Maria Besta. He was born at the Baraguanath Hospital in Gauteng. As it stands, we currently do not know who his father was, but there are rumors that he was a local shopkeeper in Aikenhof, where the Besta family lived. Maria, on the other hand, says that she had been sexually assaulted at the time, of which led to her conceiving Tabo. I am not sure if she was assaulted by the shopkeeper or a different person. For reasons that are not exactly clear to us, or to me at least, Messi never registered Tabo Pesta with the Department of Home Affairs so he could maybe get a birth certificate. This might have had a lot to do with the fact that she herself didn't have an ID at the time, and I think according to the apartheid system at the time, she would have needed to be at least 18 years old to have one, but I could be wrong. Please chime in in the comment section just to let me know how it worked in 1986. At the age of one, Macy took Tabo to be raised by his grandparents, Macy's mother and father, Abel and Johanna Besta. She said she did this because she wasn't coping with the stress of being a single parent and having to constantly work, of which would be understandable. Mercy is said to have been a very neglectful parent to Tabo Besta, and she was barely there as a mother. This obviously led to a strained relationship between the two. She says this is because her relationship with her own mother, Johanna Besta, had grown increasingly strenuous over the years. She says her mother was verbally abusive towards her and she ended up deciding to never visit her again. This meant that she would have very little to no contact with her son. Tabo Besta would move on to start school in the south of Johannesburg in 1997, and for reasons that are not exactly clear to the rest of us, he dropped out in grade 5 in 2002. 
This is around the time where Messi says that her mother, Johanna, had decided that Tabo and his younger sister should move back to stay with Messi. However, Tabo Besta was greatly opposed to this idea, so he ended up running away from home because he didn't want to leave with his mother. I'm not sure if Messi had even bothered to look for the young man or he, like try to understand why he was opposed to the idea of living with her, but she later claims that she didn't abandon Tabo. He's the one who just didn't want to live with her. This runaway habit of Tabo Pesta is also said to have been the reason why he was never able to get an identity document until now. And according to Messi, she went to get her ID in 2002 with the help of her aunt, Johanna's sister. Messi was 37 at this point and all her children, including Tabo, did not have birth certificates. So after getting her ID, she decided to get her children's birth certificate and Tabo was nowhere to be found at this point. There's no evidence that Messi or her family had even bothered to look for Tabo Besta or even tried to fix their relationship. Even after both parents had passed away, it appears that Messi was just not trying. From all of this, we can sort of understand or see the neglectful nature of Messi's parenting style and how she did very little to guide her son in a direction that could possibly keep him away from crime and out of prison. Like, I know there are kids who come from good homes and still end up involved in criminal activities. But in this case, because of the absence of guidance from the parent's side, I can't help but wonder what could have happened if Mercy had tried a bit harder and made an effort in her parenting style. But then again, based on the recent interviews that Mercy has done, you see that Usisi is a very selfish person. Um, there's one interview where she is complaining that Tabo Pesta didn't even bother to send her money whilst he was living in Hyder Park with Dr. Nandipa. Like, she doesn't care that he was a fugitive at this point. She doesn't care how he got the money, that he got the money from scamming people. She doesn't even care that at this point they hadn't been in contact for years. All she cares about is herself and her needs to be taken care of. What a great mom you have there, Tabo Pesta. Not much of a shocker where you ended up, mate. Anyways, let's continue. Now, moving on to his stay in prison. We spoke um, in detail um, in part two about Tabo Besta operating businesses whilst in prison and that those businesses were registered under a woman by the name of Pumuto Tenga. She was the sole director of all of them and she was also involved in the day-to-day -day operations of these businesses. So it wasn't a case of maybe stolen identity. She is also pictured attending the 21st Century Media Five Star launch, and she is named the CEO of the company. So that brought into question her involvement in this whole case. I wondered, you know, what did she know and the depth of her involvement in this whole scam, the whole Tabo Best scam? According to an article published by the news publication Zimoja, Pumuto had met Tabo Besta in 2017 through Instagram. He had introduced himself as Tom Motepe and showed interest in the community work that Pumuto was involved in at the time. He told Pumuto that he is based in the UK and the USA and that he was related to the Motepe family. He made several business proposals to Pumuto and one of them was creating the 21st Century Media Group, and he also proposed that they roll out um, ARVs to disadvantaged communities, and this was going to be done through Dr. Nandi Pamakudumana, whom we are going to discuss um, in the next video. Pumuzo says that she was taken by these proposals, of course, especially that of the 21st Century Media. Tom Modepe had pretended to be a shareholder of the international brands such as 21st Century Fox and Sky Digital. She says that Tom Modepe would organize meetings with high-level and legit business people, and he did this with so much ease that it removed any and all suspicion that she um, had at the time. Pumoto says that she began to catch up on the scam in 2018 when she was approached by the lawyers representing the 21st Century Fox aiming to sue her 
and 21st century media for misrepresenting themselves as part of 21st century folks. She later discovered, together with some of the company's employees, that Tom Madebe was indeed convicted Facebook rapist Tabo Besta. She decided to confront Besta, who tearfully admitted who he was and that he had been in prison all along and conducted all his correspondence behind bars. Pumoto says that upon finding this out, she deregistered all the related companies and simply wrote everything off as a bad experience. I mean, to give it to her, though, it definitely was a bad experience, Jem, no matter how you look at it. For example, if she was indeed scammed by Besta and she lost money and damaged her reputation, that's a bad experience because that will probably cost her in many of her future business ventures. On the other side, if it happens that she had knowledge of the scam, making her part of the Besta scammer crew, it would also be a bad experience because now that they are busted, it's affecting her legit businesses and it, it has possibly stained her reputation forever. All in all, I wish we had more to go on in the story so we can maybe be in a place to be able to determine whether she was scammed or not. Like whom are these high level business people she would have meetings with? Do they even exist or it's just an excuse to cover up her ignorance? The fact that she hadn't done proper research or thorough research before getting into business with Tom Motepe. If those business people do exist, were they part of the scam too? How much money did they receive or lose? Because she claims that she lost a lot of money. How much money did she lose? How did she lose the money? Did she report Besta to the authorities in 2018? Or she simply said, oops, bad experience, bye. You know, did she ever meet Dr. Nandi Pamakutumana? Remember earlier, um, Tabo had proposed uh, the rollout of ARVs uh, via Dr. Nandi Pa. Did Pumunzo ever get to meet um, Dr. Nandipa? Did the rollout of ARVs ever happen? I mean, I can go on and on. I do have my own theories, though, um, but I wouldn't want to uh, voice them out here and possibly victim shame just in case it comes out later that she was indeed scammed. Okay, fam, this is where we are going to end it with part three of the Tabo Best of It All. I am currently putting together a script for part four where we will talk in detail about Dr. Nandipa and her involvement with Tabo Besta. I'm also recording that short video that I mentioned in the beginning detailing the timeline of this whole case from the escape up until now. It will be up either today or tomorrow. After Dr. Nandipa, after I do the Dr. Nandipa video, I will like to take a little break from the best of it all and talk about other cases because, yo, guys, I, yeah, no, yeah, I'd, I'd like a little break. So I'll be doing that. Um, thank you so much, guys, for listening or watching. Please do not forget to like, share, subscribe if you haven't. See you on the next one. Goodbye.